A former warehouse in downtown Los Angeles is now home to one of the world's largest private collections of Porsches. Over 20 models dating from various decades are housed in this two-story building. The owner is British-born Magnus Walker. He came to LA for one reason only. It's pretty simple. It was sex, drugs, and rock and roll. I moved here as a 19-year-old back in 1986, so almost 32 years ago. Recently, I turned 50, so I spent 19 years of my life in Sheffield, England. That's where I grew up, the steel town. But as a kid, I'd always dreamt of America. I watched a lot of American TV shows such as Starsky and Hutch, Dukes of Hazard, and always had an affiliation for America and Los Angeles. Always loved Americana, American music, Evil Knievel, and uh, I suppose it was my destiny to end up in L.A. It's the place that I call home. And the warehouse really was his home. He used to live right here on the upper floor, but those days are over. No, I no longer live here. I live right around the corner. This became a uh, full-time film location, so it actually made more sense to financially not live here. So what started out purely as an accident became uh, basically my day job. For me, Porsche is a hobby. It's not a business. What pays my bills is Hollywood, the film location. And by that, I mean we rent the building out that we're sat in to production companies for commercial filming of TV shows, music videos, film, reality, still shoot, and uh, TV commercials. So uh, ironically, I'm in the film location business, and uh, the Porsche hobby is just a uh, passion project for me. Like I say, it's not a business. I don't build customer cars. I'm just an enthusiast like everyone else that loves Porsche, loves to build, loves to collect, and ultimately, loves to drive. I always say it doesn't matter what language you speak, whether it's English, German, or Japanese, we all speak Porsche. As befits a real enthusiast, Magnus Walker also has his own garage in which he and fellow mechanics work on the cars. Second Porsche I ever owned, it's the one I'm most associated with. It's car number 277. It started life as a 71 911T. That's the car I've done all my track days, my club racing, all my spirited drives. It's the one that's in most of the videos and magazine articles. My 1971 911T is my favorite Porsche. And you can see why. Whenever he can, Magnus gets behind the wheel and takes it out for a spin in and around LA because he believes that Porsches are made to be driven. It's the greatest thing. That's what I love about Porsche, and that's why this is my favorite car. It covers all the senses. Looks good, feels good, smells good, tastes good, and it sounds good, too. I hunt, and I've bought cars all over the world. I've actually recently acquired two cars from Sydney, Australia. So it's a global thing. Cars go all over the world, and uh, I'm able to find them and bring them back here to the warehouse in downtown LA. These are all 911s though, so my ultimate goal when it comes to Porsche and sports cars is to own one of everything that Porsche's ever made in a sports car. So the new Quest is front engine, mid engine, rear engine, both air and water cooled. So that's 924, 928, 944, 968 on the front engine transaxle water cooled, 914 and Cayman on the mid engine, and then one of every generation of 911. For me, I always have this mantra that says, I expect the worst and hope for the best. You know, I'm not interested in uh, low mileage concourse type of cars. I'm interested in driver quality type of cars. So it uh, doesn't really matter. Every car I've ever owned needs some sort of work and my own personal attention and details and touches uh, put to the car. So for me, as long as the car's something I'm interested in, it doesn't matter whether it runs or drives. If I'm interested in it, it's desirable to me. That's all that matters. Some people might not even consider the wrecks sitting outside cars anymore. But with a lot of love and elbow grease, this urban outlaw, as Walker calls himself, restores them to their former glory. Yeah, I mean, urban outlaw is a term, really, that's just, I live in an urban environment. I tend to do things a little bit outside of the norm. If you look up the word outlaw, it means someone that lives beyond the, the rules of the law. 
And like I say, I've always done things my own way. And uh, even when it comes to driving, I describe myself as a spirited driver. The cars that I built are sort of hot rod outlaw interpretations of what I like to call sport purpose, streetable track cars. So uh, urban outlaw is just a term living in an urban environment and doing something a little bit different in an outlaw style. And just like the sound of the guitar, the roar of a Porsche is music to his ears. Okay.